Mr. Anderson. 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 Hey everybody, Zach again, NewTutor.com, coming in and making a video for you today. Uh, it's not time for another Steven Anderson video. People have been asking for another one, so here it is. A few months ago, people had emailed me a bunch of times saying, Hey, Zach, look at this video by Steven Anderson. I think he's calling you out. You should check this out. Is he, you know? And I looked at it, and it kind of looks that way. It kind of looks like he was calling me out. A little bit. We, me and Mr. Anderson have had some back and forth, uh, some correspondence on chat, I think, on Facebook, and then also on uh, email a few times. He had, uh, I had asked him a number of times to come on my channel. He absolutely refuses to do that. And then he also uh, sent me uh, a pre-release of his video movie, uh, Marching Towards Zion, because he probably knew I was going to disagree with it. And he wanted my take on it, probably for me to do a review on it. And I never did it because um, I just had too many things going on. But we've had some correspondence, and then he came out with this video, and a bunch of people emailed me and said, Zach, I think he's talking about you. So here's the clip. Let's, well, here's our first clip. Let's check it out. The, the, this thing of, hey, let's go move out in the middle of nowhere somewhere, strategic relocation or whatever. You know what? I'm not interested. I want to be right here in the middle of a city full of people who are dying and going to hell. I want to be where the harvest is. I'm not interested in going out and moving in the boonies. And, you know, so many people will say, oh, you know, I just want to go out and live in the country and farm and have animals and have a ranch. You know what? That's great, too. You know, in our flesh, we all think that'd be pretty cool yeah. to go out and live in the middle of nowhere. And be, but I'd rather be a spiritual farmer. I'd rather work in God's vineyard. So first off, let me just say, so here's a guy who wants, who says he, he doesn't want to live in the middle of nowhere. He wants to live in the city, but yet he's preaching in front of a painting that kind of looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, look at that, right? I mean, it's silly. So, I mean, he says he doesn't want to live in the boonies where I live, but he's preaching in front of a painting that kind of looks like where I live. I just, I just thought it was ironic. I just had to point that out to begin with. But first off, folks, listen, here's the deal. If I was living in my flesh, I would not be living here where I have to raise my own food, grow my own food. No, I'd be living in the city. If I was really living in the flesh... I wouldn't be living out here in the middle of nowhere on some on this land. I'd be living in the city, going through drive-throughs, eating junk food, going to casinos, going to ball games, you know, having eighty thousand dollar a year job, driving a nice car, probably doing like most of these other people out there, cheating on their spouse and uh, neglecting their children, and you know, going to church on Sundays and pretending to, that I'm a good Christian who believes in God. I mean, if I was really living my flesh, that's what I'd be doing. If I really wanted to live it up in Sin City, because all the cities are Sin Cities now, that's what I'd be doing. Right? If my wife was living in the flesh, she wouldn't be in the kitchen right now making bread from scratch, making our meals from scratch so that we can eat healthy. No. She'd be working at a job, a nice job, because she's college educated too, and she'd be driving a nice car. Our kids would be in daycare. She wouldn't be homeschooling them. And, you know, we'd be living it up. If my, if my wife was living in the flesh, she would not be getting water from a well every day. We wouldn't be going, we wouldn't be getting our water from a well. We wouldn't, my wife would not be using well water every day. <laughs> you know, Rebecca, Rebecca in the Bible, she, she got water from a well. Oh, Rebecca, you're just living in the flesh. Why can't you get your water like everyone else from the aqueduct? <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I just, I just. I can't help it. Let's continue. Here's the next clip. I'd rather sow seeds in the hearts of people that are dying and going to hell with the word of God than to sit there and sow seeds of organic plants. I mean, is that really what life's about? Growing organic produce? And look, somebody's got to grow organic produce, but you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because I'm filled with the spirit and that's what God's called me to do. And not everybody can do what I can do. An unsaved person can grow organic produce. I mean, do you have to be saved to grow non-GMO crops? Anyone can grow non-GMO crops? Oh, I guess we should just go buy our crops from the heathen, right? Because the heathen can grow our, the non-GMO food and we'll just eat it, right? And, and come on, seriously? 
it, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all raised their own sheep. They all raised their own animals. They didn't buy their animals from the heathen. Oh, Abraham, you're just living in the flesh. Sell all of your livestock and go win some people to the Lord in Sodom over there. I just, really? No, the patriarchs all raised their own food. They all raised their own animals. The Bible does not tell you to go live in the city. In fact, you see over and over again from the people in the Bible who are righteous, the patriarchs, actually the exact opposite. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I mean, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elisha, most of the minor prophets, John the Baptist, and even our Messiah himself, all did not live in the city. And you see, do you know how many times you see our Messiah, it says that our Messiah retreated to the wilderness in the New Testament? I, I, could, I tried to find the, the amount of times without repeating myself through the Gospels because, you know, the Gospels try to, they tell the same story over and over again in just a different way. And so I was trying to figure out how many times, I couldn't figure it out, how many times our Messiah actually retreated to the wilderness and prayed and sought refuge there. It's a lot. So, what? I mean, the one exception is probably Jonah, right? I mean, Jonah, go to Nineveh. He's like, what? I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm not going to the city. They're not going to hear what I have to say. You want me to go to Nineveh? And God had to force him to go to Nineveh. And he went to Nineveh. But he didn't buy an apartment there. He didn't like, okay, I'm going to move in and buy a one-story or a one-room studio apartment in downtown Nineveh. No. He, he gave the message that he was told to give, and then he left. He left. <clears throat> You don't see it in the Bible. You don't see in the Bible people staying in the city. In fact, you see it over and over again them leaving the city. Uh, five, uh, Luke five sixteen, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed, talking about our Messiah. And what's wrong with having a garden? You know that it seems to me that's where our Messiah liked to hang out. John chapter eighteen verse one. When you, Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book Cedron, where there was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Yeshua, Jesus, oft times resorted thither with his disciples. It means he went there a lot, guys. He hung. They hung out in the garden. They ate in the garden. Why? Because it was a garden. It was a garden. Who doesn't like to hang out in a the garden? There's food there. I mean, it's, unless it's one of those gardens, you know, that they grow waste of space plants that just pretty flowers that don't really produce anything. But, yeah. Rabbit trail. So anyway, all I'm saying is that you look at the Bible, you read the Bible, you see the exact opposite of what's in Pastor Anderson, Stephen Anderson's message there. People today, you look at your churches and all people dying of diseases. You got people, we lift up brother so-and-so today because he's been diagnosed with diabetes. We lift up sister so-and-so today because she was stricken with cancer. It's because you're eating garbage. You're eating the things that he says are not to be food. And even the things that can be considered food really aren't food because they're processed with so much chemicals that no one would recognize it 200 years ago. And that's okay with you. That's fine. I see. I didn't want to do that with my family. I wanted to get out and just raise our own food, eat healthier so that we can live a half, help, healthier, happier lifestyle. It's important to me that my family is healthy. And so I'm an overcomer. I'm not going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have my own garden. I'm going to raise my own livestock, just like the things that I see in the Bible. See the people in the Bible doing. All right, here's our next clip. And you know what? Living the Christian life is all about making sacrifices and working for the Lord. And you know what? Just say, oh, I just really want to go live out in Timbuktu. You know what, though? If that's not where the lost are, you need to stay where the lost are. All right, Mr. Anderson, I have news for you. There are people right here in Timbuktu who are lost. There are lost people who need to hear the saving grace of our Messiah. They need to hear the good news that you can repent and again be grafted in. They need to hear that news. They need to be uplifted in prayer. They need to be prayed for. They need to be given encouragement and, and, and shown what is right and what is wrong according to, our, to the, the rules, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. They need to hear the good news of our Messiah who died for their sins. They need to hear that right here in Timbuktu. So here's the deal. What it comes down to is this. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to give in to the things of this world. 
I got to hear those words on that day. Well done, good and faithful servant. I got to be an overcomer. And to overcome, I have to turn my back on sin. And it's a lot easier to do that out here than it is to do that in there. It, it just is. And so I get the emails. I get the emails from people. Oh, Zach, we would love to do what you do. I want to be out there with you. I got to be out there in the wilderness. I got to be out. I, I, I got to get my family out of this hellhole of a city. Why? Because you see, you see that it's easy for your children to be turned away. You see that it's easy for you to be turned away. Your heart. See, when you surround yourself with so much filth all the time, you begin to stink like the filth. You begin to look and act like the filth. There's this book that was written a number of years ago. Uh, it's called Already Gone. And it was about the enormous statistics of kids who leave the church, all denominations, and they turn their back on God. They get it. They get into high school. They, they get around their friends and their peers, even Christian schools, and they get into college and they turn their back. They never come back to church ever again. They begin to live like the rest of the world does. I'm not gonna. Ha that's not gonna happen with my family. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna allow it. I get the emails from you parents out there who see your children being sucked in to the stuff your kids are involved in with their peers and with other people at school with the site. You can't even the homeschool kids. I know so many homeschool kids who once they got out in the world they were gone. They were gone, already gone, because they they got sucked into the sin that is Babylon out there. And so just because you homeschool your kids doesn't mean if you just release them back into the same, you know, place of filth, they're going to get sucked in. And I'm not, it's not going to happen out here. I'm going to raise my kids a different way. I'm going to go back and raise my children the way they were raised in the Bible. I'm going to try my best to instill a godly fear of, a, a, a godly fear of life into them from our, from our creator and to show them that hard work can pay off and that it's rewarding and that. I don't have the influences of Babylon on my family 24-7 constantly. I'm not going to do it. And so, um, yeah, already gone. I'm not going to subject, subject my kids. I've got to hear those words that day. Well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, my flesh would love to live in the cities and do like the people in the cities do. But I'm not. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be set apart. It's still clear, Mr. Anderson. You need to go home and read your Bible. Thanks.